Guys, this isn't clickbait. I swear on my cat's life. Oh, uh, sorry, Kotya. But you need to watch this video. If you've decided you'll only need 8 gigabytes of RAM and won't be doing any kind of significant video editing, 3D work or coding, for example, you can stop watching now if you like. But if you're not sure how much RAM you'll need in the new M1 Max, watch my video in the top right hand corner and come back here. For everyone else, please stay tuned. Over the last 48 hours, I've seen several benchmark videos comparing the 8GB RAM version of the new M1 Max to the 16GB version. I wanted to start off by saying these reviews were brilliantly done and hopefully my 16GB RAM version MacBook arrives soon so I can do my own testing. Now, in many of these reviews, it was found that there's not a noticeable performance difference between the 8GB and 16GB version. This is what I want to talk about because while I agree that this is currently accurate, in the future it almost certainly won't be. These testing videos, including the ones even I'll be doing in the next few weeks, are only reflective of the current state of the M1 system. Guys, the M1 has literally only been out for one week. Just one week. It's a brand new, revolutionary piece of silicon, the likes of which we've never seen before. Literally almost nothing is optimized or even compatible with it. Seriously, Apple had to create Rosetta 2 just so third-party apps would even open. Just take a look at the apps on my MacBook Air. Almost every single one of them is Intel-based and is running off the Rosetta 2 compatibility code, which slows performance. The other thing is that 99% of apps and programs have only ever been optimized for the previous Mac Intel-based systems. It will take time for these programs to be updated and more importantly, optimized for the M1, and only then will we see the true performance of the M1 and exactly how much RAM is truly best for your specific workload. Now, these comparison videos are being based off unoptimized, technically incompatible programs running off the Rosetta 2 translation software. It's almost like running Windows via Parallels on a Mac, except in this case, Windows is any unoptimized x86 app and Parallels is Rosetta 2. This is a serious, serious issue because people might be making expensive purchase decisions based on the data in these videos, which may soon be completely wrong. The M1 chip is one of the fastest and most optimized things we've ever seen, and the RAM is incorporated so tightly into the architecture, it can reach untold levels of performance. What happens when companies like Adobe or DaVinci or Microsoft update their programs to take advantage of this? What happens if in 12 months time, everything is 100% M1 compatible and fully optimized and can take advantage of every single megabyte of available RAM? Well, if you bought an eight gigabyte RAM model, you're stuck with that because the RAM is obviously not upgradable. You are screwed. So what's my advice? Well, definitely do watch my first 8 vs 16 gigabyte RAM video linked in the top right corner. 8 gigabytes is still more than enough for 95% of people, especially because the RAM works so well on the new Apple Silicon. However, if you're still unsure about what RAM option you need, either get the 16 gigabyte option now if you can afford it and future-proof yourself, or if you're okay to wait, Wait until you see more testing and accurate data once apps begin to get updated. Now, this is mainly for those of you doing 3D work, coding, After Effects, or intense video editing, for example. Just don't be fooled that 8 gigabytes of RAM is enough, because in my opinion, even with the super fast M1 RAM, it is not enough for really heavy use, despite what other videos out there are saying. Take a look at this Blender render. I'm using over six gigabytes of swap memory on my eight gigabyte RAM model. By the way, see my video on swap memory in the top right corner. Adobe After Effects also recommends a minimum of 16 gigabytes of RAM as well. So that's it guys. Please make the right decision that suits your particular workflow and current situation the best. Don't rush into a decision 
based off data that could very well be completely wrong in just six to 12 months. And as always, if you have any questions or comments or video topics for me to cover, please leave them in the comment section below. But apart from that, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.